my graduates from my school being Forbes. Bag drop. Bag drop. <laughs> a mic drop. Bag drop. Bag drop. All right, guys, welcome back. EYL, this is a highly anticipated. It's long overdue. Long overdue, but every, <laughs> everything happens at the right time. It's a so, fact. You know, this is one of these situations where um, it's, it's, it's the momentum has built um, pretty substantially <laughs> over the last year. And um, HIM 500 has really grown an online community. And um, he's done it diligently and he's done it in real life we actually got a chance to see a lot of uh his work we want to see his conference and uh it's very impressive what he's put together so we've talked about credit before um and shout out to everybody that's been on our platform eyl university and eyl has talked about mm -hmm. credit and the credit dude yep and uh but for the most part the credit that we've talked about is like on the along the lines of like how to repair your credit or how to establish you know basic level established credit which is important we need that Levels of understanding, but um, you know, it's like there's different sectors of credit and just different sectors of financial literacy. So, him 500, um, he focuses on a variety of different things, but I guess what he's been known for the most is how to turn credit into cash, and um, it's a lot of cool stuff as far as like working with credit and mm -hmm. understanding how to utilize cards understanding how to utilize cars, understanding <laughs> all kinds of... <laughs> we don't, don't see it all in real life. <laughs> yeah, 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 all kinds of stuff. And yeah, it happened in real life. Like I said, you know, we... Um, shout out to the whole crew in Atlanta. I don't want to get anybody, but, um, you know, yeah, Leo, Alex, Him500, Gooch, uh, Maddie J, Just, Justin... Um, this is two weeks out. This is two weeks out. This is two weeks out. Yeah, everybody. Her 500. Yeah. Her 500. Most importantly, that's a fact. Without this, it's not um, possible. So we, we go down there, <laughs> right, we, we right. realize that they got a whole movement of entrepreneurs out there that's doing their thing. They're young, they're black, they're all networking with each other. And him 500 uh, is the, he's one of the, the, the members of the crew. And yeah. um, everything that he, he raps about, he talks about, he they, lives they, in real life. They said he's the positive peer pressure guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's the, yo, you got that car? Yeah. You need to get this card. Yeah. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. him. It's like these rappers. Like some rappers actually live it. Some rappers are just rapping about it. But everything he talks about, he actually lives. And we saw it <laughs> firsthand. So this is an exciting conversation. I'm excited to have it. We're going to talk about a wide variety of hacks, financial literacy, credit stuff that you can't google this information you can't google that's what nah, he's you saying. can't that's yeah, yeah. you got this is in the safe you gotta you can't crack the safe on this i like that Facts. so marcus barney aka him 500 um welcome to eyl thank you for joining us and i appreciate you guys having me i appreciate it. i'm excited yeah man yeah yeah so let's let's jump right into it so uh -huh. you, you 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 have a whole community and you teach thousands of people but it didn't always start like that right so no. from my understanding uh you started as a manager in a cell phone store? Yeah, so I, um, getting started, one of the things that I noticed was, uh, I mean, early on, what I started was that was actually doing cell phone repair, but I started with real estate at 18 in California, but that was 2006, market crash, 2007, 2008, I moved to Atlanta. So when I moved to Atlanta, uh, I found myself doing cell phone, repairing cell phones, like doing, run around the city, fixing everybody's cell phones and end up landing me in a cell phone repair shop, partnering with the owner. Um, and I partnered with the owner and then I started to um, run the cell phone shop for him you know, on the cell phone repair side. Okay. So how did that morph into, because I know there was some trials and tribulations up to <laughs> yeah, so How did that turn into what you're doing now? Honestly, um, that's one of the things that I don't even think uh, a lot of people don't know. Um, share a little bit of insight is that I ran into a time at, at, at that age, between the age of 18 and 25, I always tell people it's like the most trying time for a, a young man. And I let money get ahead of me, right? I started making, I probably was making seven to $10,000 a month at the time, um, had maybe 30, $40,000 in savings. And so as it started to grow, I started to become a, addicted to money. You know, and as as money starts to play a part, it plays a it, greed comes into in play. And what happened was is that 
the owner Sprint came and told us, basically, if you don't have three locations, you have to shut your repair center down. Well, the repair center was making us about 20 plus thousand a month. Um, with me running it, I was bringing, I was taking 50%. He was taking 50%. He put it in, he was like, yo, well, listen, um, give me some time. I'm gonna figure something out. But at this time, um, everybody was like buying iPhones, you know, on the black market to resell to send overseas. And this is when Sprint first started doing it. So people will come in and people will try to buy iPhones from us for like three, 400 bucks over regular price. Mm -hmm. But we got paid off the contract. Well, he was like, yo, if I, um, I may have a, a account that I can order like a few hundred iPhones. You think that the people will buy them? I'm like, I'm sure they'll buy them. Guaranteed. It's like the first iPhone. This is the, it was multiple, but it was when they first came to Sprint. Oh, okay. So I'm like, yeah, for sure they'll buy them. Um, I put the phone call in. He brought in the account, ordered a hundred hundred iPhones, uh, 150 iPhones. They was worth a hundred thousand dollars. Well, we sold them, split it. And 22 years old, I don't know the back end yet. I don't really know business. He said insurance are covered. My, I'm like, yeah, well, he found out the rough, the rough and the rugged truth insurance only covered $6,000 since insurance covered $6,000. You owe ninety four thousand on a hundred thousand dollars worth of iPhones. They already then came out and looked into it. Nobody figured out what happened, where they who where they got ordered from. Nothing. But since it came under his store ID, it came back. A year later, he goes and submits information and say, "Well, it came from this IP address, and if it came from this IP address, he did it and threw me under the bus." Mm. And at this time, now I'm 23, 24, uh, 23, almost 24. We going back and forth to court. And my lawyer just go, he just like, yo, listen, it's nothing concrete saying you did it. But I've seen people convicted on less. And I would hate for you to go and fight it and still lose. And I'm like, but his role, he said, you can put that in there. Like, basically, if you tell and go to prison, you still going to, now you're going to go to prison with the jacket on of like a tell. Uh, you told snitch. I'm going to be a snitch. What, yeah. So what's your options? Uh, is it go to jail or, or repay? Did they give you that option? Like you got to pay this 94,000 or go to jail? So that's what they, what they did was it's crazy. Listen, this is one of the reasons. And I always say, and I'm thankful. Um, I had a white lawyer for so long. Um, we, we, we didn't see eye to eye. I let him go. Um, I was going back and forth to court and I hired one of my friend's wife to be my lawyer. She was a lawyer. She came to court. And when she came to court, she came to court with a Louis bag, a diamond bracelet, nice watch, big diamond ring. Right. And I look and I go, you like, you look pop. <laughs> right? Keep it a buck. Like you she pop did. it. Right. <laughs> and, and I'm just thinking to myself, like I'm finna to get grilled. We walk in the DA switched. It was nothing but black women DAs. It was a new black girl DA and all her assistants and her whole team was black women. Every other lawyer in the courtroom that day was white. White men. Mm -hmm. They, some kind of black girl magic happened. <laughs> <laughs> she came back and she said, well, listen, how much you feel comfortable that you owe? What's your rep? What's the part you feel like you owe? I said 60,000. She was like, okay. They say you pay the 60000 back, you get probation, and, and you get first offenders like it never happened. And I'm looking, I'm thinking to myself, I've been fighting this case two years, going back and forth to court. And it's over? She like, yeah, it's over. 60000 60000 and it's over. Um, but the, 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 the part, the most trying part was through the time I've, I've never been in that situation. Mm -hmm. So through that time, I don't know what what life is, because I don't got control now. I'm like, yo, I have no control over my life. I've never been in a situation where since 18, I've been in real estate. I've always been ahead and in control. I felt like I ran, like, I ran my life. And then I, I realized, like, yo, you, you better be on the right path to run your life because this can be gone like this. 
And so from there, um, that's when I realized, like, we closed it out. I got that behind me. And then I started figuring out, um, you know, me, I worked in banks. So, like, knowing all the bank procedures, but I know I can't go back if this holds above me. You know, I couldn't do it while I was fighting the case. Mm -hmm. So, at that point, that's when really I started really learning and digging into credit because I had to figure out, like, yo, I have to now have my own blue, my financial backing because there's nowhere else for me to get, you know, I can't go to work. The kind of money I want to make, I can't go to work. So I need some kind of fund, some kind of trust fund behind me. And I started digging into credit, really getting heavy into that. Um, and then leveraging everything I did working at the banks and ended up actually even going back to a bank, getting back in and, and kind of helping people. And then that's when the credit stuff started because I couldn't work a job because I was used to making money already. That's crazy, man. Cause, I mean, I read your story. It was like you've always been an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And so to even have the 60000 to beat that, that I mean, that's pretty remarkable. Um, so did, was nah, there I had to make payments. <laughs> I go, I'm not going to front. I, mean, nah, I, had to make, I had to make payments uh, to get it done. Yeah. I mean, but, even that. But, yeah, I mean, that's one of those things where it's like sometimes everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. Well, I, not even sometimes. Everything always happens for a reason, right? And mm -hmm. it's like, um, like you said, between the ages of 18 and 25, Especially for anybody, but especially young men, especially black men, mm -hmm. it's very tempting. You have a lot of temptations. You have music, you have just the culture, society, and a lot of times, you know, we want to get to the finish line a lot quicker than we should what our parents, what our grandparents would advise us. And, you know, a hard head makes a soft ass. That's, yeah. that's just you know, I, I, was, I, I was actually thinking, like, <laughs> yo, life is fast, I'm choosing to move quicker. Yeah. And then on the other part, it was like, we always talk about this line, Shotty. We like, yo, change is cool to cop, but more important is lawyer fees. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is like, well, you got to prime yeah, example. Shout out to Hove. Yeah. But, but yeah. The, the shining light in that for me is that you, you know, saying that you was in the financial space and me being in the financial space, I know anything on your record like that, it prohibits you from a lot. like ever really working in the financial space. So it's mm -hmm. like, so now you're forced to kind of figure it out. You still have a financial space mind, but yeah. if that didn't happen, you probably would have just been a regular corporate worker maybe. But now you have to like kind of force yourself into be like an entrepreneur on the credit side and learn credit. And then that blossomed into yeah. where you are now. So learning what happened was is that I thought, I said, listen, my goal wasn't even getting credit. I started learning, I learned credit when I was 18 uh, my broker, my real estate broker had a credit repair company. I did all the underwriting. But my goal when I started messing with credit, I go, OK, I need to get mine together. Right. So I start focusing on my credit, figuring it out. And when everything happened, I never like literally the day was January 4th. Uh, it was January 4th, 2015, um, when the case closed and was done. January 20th, I started my credit repair company. Between that time, I was figuring out what am I going to do? Like, what am I going to do? I started messing with my credit. And then I said, well, I'm going to help other people. And I remember putting it out there like, yo, I'm going to help other people with their credit. Right. I'm leveraging mine. I figured it out. See, people need it. I remember I, I made 11,000 first month. Boom. I go, OK, I got something. Start slowing down. And I remember like leveraging like starting to build my credit up and figuring out what's the benefits because i knew it was more it had to be more than get a buy a house buy a car and get a credit card just for emergency purposes i'm like nah it's more to this this has to be worth more than just this what it is on the simple on the surface that's where it started to like flourish and i started digging deep into like yo how do i really go and get money if i want to get credit card and i want to get funded and fund my own business where do I, how do I get the money? So, so in 2015, right, you said January, mm -hmm. what type of things are you doing to leverage your credit at this point or right in the beginning? Now, at the beginning, I was trying to make money. Okay. So that was, that was the business. That was the business that I had, um, helping people, showing them how to make money. So when it came from, like, I remember working in the banks, helping, helping people with it and they still couldn't get approved. Mm. So then at that point, I'm going, I'm looking now, and that's when I start really publicly helping people versus like, you know, when I was working before, when I'm working in the bank, going through all my trials, um, I could help people, but it was quiet. It wasn't like a marketed company. So now it's out publicly and I'm working it and it started bringing in. So now I'm going, okay, this is my business. I'm making money off of it. I have good credit now. Okay. What's the benefits and perks of it? Gotcha. 
Yeah, that's and then at that point, that's when I started leveraging it, like learning about rewards, how to get credit cards, how to like start credit card stacking and stuff like that. So, all right, let's get into it. Let's get into the meat and potatoes of what everybody wants to know this information. So I got questions. I know Troy got some Oof. questions. But one thing that <laughs> one thing that we, we haven't spoke about on Ernie Leisure yet, and um, a lot of people have always asked us to cover it and they always ask questions about it, is trade lines. So I'm going to ask you a couple questions about trade lines, but before, for people that might not even ever heard of a trade line, they don't even know what that is. Um, mm -hmm. What is a trade line? So a trade line is essentially an account on your credit report. So a trade line is any account on your credit report that reports on your credit. So a vehicle, the vehicle, the history of that, of the vehicle from when you open it to when you close it, um, that's a trade line on your credit report. So it's any account that reflects and shows on your credit report. Okay. So there's, a, there's like a hack where you can actually add people to, to trade line? As a, to, to add people to your card as an authorized user. So now what happens is, is this, when it comes to authorized users, and yes, it's a lot of details to it um, that you have to understand and like different applying when you're applying and, you know, getting different things and the benefits of them. Mm -hmm. But essentially what it is, is that if I got a credit card and I got 10 spaces available, I can add you on to my, my credit card as an authorized user. And this is an authorized user trade line. If I add you on as an authorized user and I have 10 spots available, I charge you $650, right? Well, $650 times 10, that's $6,500. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm only going to leave you on my card for 60 days. I never give you access. I set my account up in a way that you can't compromise me. Now I make $6,500 every 60 days off one credit card. End of the year. I make $40,000 off having a credit card, never going into debt, never actually using and spending the, the bank's money. And that's, mm. to, that's to help other people build their credit. Right? Right. And that's helping other people build and establish because it comes to data points on a credit report. How many positive accounts do you have? What's your credit card utilization? All of these things go into consideration when applying um, and leveraging and using your credit. So when those things come into play, authorized users hit so many points because it gives you accounts. It gives you age uh, history. It gives you... Um, utilization so when your utilization everything is right on your credit card all of these things reflect on your on the person's credit uh report who purchases the authorized user so if i'm the person that's the authorized user do i do i get a card or i don't get a card you don't get a card see because like when i this is too crazy like my credit history goes back to 35 years right i'm mm -hmm. 38 but my mom put an american express card in my name so mm -hmm. my credit so like technically i'm an authorized user so that was a trade line that she made for me in a sense so she gave you a card on her account. Right. Yeah. So what happened is, is that if she gave you a card on her account, that made you the authorized user. And then that's what started building your history. Right. But see what American Express, they don't report back history. They just report going forward. Mm. So the whole time that you've had that card and she opened that account up, it's been on your credit. Right. Building out. So let me ask you this. Thanks, um, mom. Because. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to your mom. For that one. <laughs> Thanks, mom. We, that, ha we have a, we have a large, um, listenership in jails in uh, the federal jails state jails it's a very interesting dynamic um i have a lot of friends family members and they always report back to me and say that eyl is big in jail so first of all shout out to all the guys in jail hold your head hold your head um, yes, sir. and all the returning citizens so you was giving us some game about information for that right as far as like the core core logics for felons and things of that nature yeah. Yeah. So now nah, that's a whole nother bar for everybody. Like, listen, um, <laughs> I, I come out of the, the community. Um, so I've been a victim of every single side of prison. Right. Pops gone for life. Uncle gone. So family members, every single friend that I grew up with originally from my neighborhood has has went down that path. And I tell people all the time is that those are some of the people coming home from prison that trying to get rehabilitated could be the hardest mm -hmm. like trying to get back in the community and it's like yo all doors shut in your face so what i tell people is i figured out um was that core logic is just this is with credit learning the secondary bureaus like most people don't know that secondary bureaus is what um is some of the companies that verify your data so you got companies like innovis core logics um lexus nexus sage stream um ars these are all companies that house secondary data when it comes to um, 
your credit. So they're just data furnishing companies. So when you dispute something, a lot of times they're the ones who verify it. Well, I found out that CoreLogic was the one who verified evictions and convictions. At that point, when I realized that CoreLogic is the company that verifies evictions and convictions, I knew I said, listen, you mean to tell me that I can fix somebody's credit, but they still get the denial. Well, if I opt out of core logic, if you got an eviction, you still can get the approval. If um, you got a conviction, you can get the approval because I never gave them permission to share that data and that information. So now when you go to get an apartment now, right, somebody who's in a position, they go, listen, well, I can help people get apartments. So if you understand how to clean your credit and opt out of the secondary bureaus, you opt out of core logics. Now you can go and get an approval for apartment. Mm. Cause that's a big thing that holds people from getting apartments is there. Yep. So essentially like this, I'll break down the whole blueprint. This is what you're going to do is that you're going to opt out and, and suppress your core logics, um, Lexus, Nexus, Sage stream, ARS, Innovis. You're going to suppress all of those. Once you suppress those, now you're going to force the credit bureaus to do an investigation with a 609 letter. So you use a 609 dispute letter. When you send that 609 dispute letter in, it's going to make them either verify that this account is accurate and verify that it belongs to you. Well, now, since they don't have anybody to check the accuracies with, they're going to now have to do an investigation. Most likely, most of the things, 60 to 70 times, 60 to 70 percent of the negative items get removed because you already remove the, the, the middleman company who's verifying everything. So now once you do that, when you go to apply for apartments, you now can go and apply. And if you've ever been evicted, it's not going to show up because you suppress uh, core logics. And if you got a felony on your background, it's not going to show up because you've um, suppressed the core logic company. But like, how do you suppress it? Like you have, yeah. to, how do you anyway, what's the time length on the suppression? Does that happen? So suppress you, you basically what you do is freeze the report and opt out of them report, uh, Sean, and they do it indefinitely until you opt back in. So you like call them and say, I want to opt out. Yeah. So you can call them, you could call or you can do it online. So if you like Google, um, like Lexus Nexus opt out, you can Google it and it'll pop up and take you to the form to actually opt out of that report. Good to know. Did you know that, Troy? I did not know that. I did not know that. <laughs> I feel like there's going to be a lot of things today. That we, go, yeah. we all going to learn together. People don't understand. <laughs> listen, right? In the community, that's one of the dope things is that I tell people, listen, that's a business in itself, right? We don't know about the secondary bureaus. So you mean to tell me, I say, listen, you mean to tell me that there's companies out there that do all this information? I say, well, listen, one company, CoreLogic, gives us a whole business model because if I opt out of that, I can now help people clean their credit. Mm -hmm. That's a service. I can now help you get an apartment. That's a service. I can bundle it together if I want. But listen, I help you get an apartment. Now, what else do I do? If I know I'm helping people get into condos, listen, I'm going to find a, the newest building that's not fully occupied. and I'm going to send people there. Well, after three or four people going and be like, yo, him 500 sent me in here to get an apartment. They're going to kind of get familiar and be wondering who's him 500. And then I show up with gift cards and trinkets and nice things and I build the relationship and I say, hey, listen, now nah, what I do is I'm an apartment specialist. I just help people find apartments and get into the city, especially new condos, things like this, and just ensure that they can get the approval when they come. Have my people been getting approved? Yes. Cool. Boom. Nice to meet you. Set the, set the relationship up. Guess what happens? Now I get a referral fee from the, the leasing agent. Now I send it directly to the leasing agent. She's going to want to, to get paid for getting people to lease. Well, guess what? Now I get paid for helping people get the apartment from the leasing agent. You've been paid four times already. That's three times. Three times. <laughs> I got paid from the client mm -hmm. for helping them with their credit. Yep. I got paid for helping them get the apartment, making sure everything was approved, make sure they get the approval. Then I get the referral fee from the leasing agent. Okay. Now I'm pretty much responsible for helping everybody get apartments in the city. I become penthouse poppy. Imagine, <laughs> right? Trademark that. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Listen, right. Yeah, trademark it, right? Penthouse poppy, I like that. So I become penthouse poppy. So now I'm I'm in front of all the fly buildings, right? I'm in front of all the fly buildings. I'm, I'm in the penthouses and the condos. But what's the biggest thing when it comes to these condos? Furniture, mm. right? So now a lot of people overlook it and don't realize furniture has one of the biggest markups, right? Furniture's markup is ridiculous. So then I go to the to, to one of the furniture stores, the mom and pop furniture stores in the area. Guess what they do? Financing. You can fund. You can finance furniture. It's true. So now guess what? I go and build a relationship. Listen, what does it take to get ten thousand dollars in furniture? Right. 
I need a $10,000 approval. Let me see what that credit report need to look like. What does this need to look like, this approval process? Now, when I get people apartments, I'm going to send you to the local furniture store to now even get the furniture. I'm not going to charge you for that. No, I got the relationship. I'm going to charge the furniture store. Hey, listen, markup is crazy on this. You're probably selling for $10,000. You're giving them $2,500 worth of furniture, maybe four. Mm. I need a $750 referral fee for every client I send in here. But when I go in, you go in and introduce yourself as, listen, make up an, I'm an apartment specialist, <laughs> right? I specialize in, in, I'm an occupancy specialist, right? I specialize in getting all the apartments in the area fully occupied or uh, occupancy level of 95 plus percent. Uh, they, they're going to be confused. I don't know what that is, but he get people apartments. <laughs> I got a list of people <laughs> that need furniture. He's an interior decorator to you. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, I do interior decorating. So now I get paid now only am I helping you get the apartment. I'm getting paid from getting you the apartment from the leasing agent. And I'm over here with the furniture guy and get a, a kick on the back end because I'm going to tell you, hey, listen, your credit is together. You can go over here and get 10000 in furniture. Now your condo is furnished. And now you that, just got paid four times. <laughs> now you get paid four times. That's penthouse poppy. That's a business for anybody that's listening. <laughs> sure, that's it don't matter what your background is. It don't matter. And it all started from you just suppressing one thing so somebody could be approved. Literally. That's that's realistically. I, I used to run that company, and that's where it started from. That's literally how that business started. You know Derek Grace? Yeah. I don't know him personally, but online, see him. Uh, that's that's our guy. Good friend of ours, EY alumni. DG. What's up, y'all? It's the fourth quarter. It's a new month. And what better way to start it than to come and join us at EYL University? Yes. The fourth quarter is where star players make a name for themselves. So come and join the number one roster. EYL University is the biggest platform for business in the universe. We have over 70 past classes weekly classes we have a private investment group on facebook which gives you access to our movie club our book club we also have bi-weekly real estate calls with mg the mortgage guy and monthly financial advising calls with none other than yours truly <laughs> so head over to eyluniversity.com right now and enter promo code eyl for 40% off of our annual membership. That's right. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Head over. We'll see you on the other side. Let's do it. He posted, I remember he posted a post of yours mm -hmm. and uh, he was like, I don't know, bro, but he dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, listen, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, right? I watch bro post and, 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 I, and I look and I be like, boy, he... We, we we do different stuff, right? But I say, yo, he he give it up, like he not he not capping on nothing he says, yeah. like even from you know I look, I don't care, I'm wearing diamonds. <laughs> Call right? <laughs> yeah. Call chandelier, chandelier, chandelier alert. But you know, nah. But you know, even with the gold game, man, like bro, vicious, nah. It's much respect. Bro. Nah, nah. When he said that, that was real though. I, he actually got my attention with that. I'm like, nah, this dude is dangerous, man. Like, <laughs> he's dangerous. Yeah, like, you know what I'm exactly. saying? Like, it's a lot of you. Your information is the most important thing in the world. Like, because mm -hmm. it's like there's so much stuff that you can just change your whole, your whole life, your whole, your whole generation with just a few vital pieces of information yeah that's all it takes and there's so many of us out here leading the way giving it up to us um and giving the information up to really see how people could change their life like i just laid out like we're on a public podcast and i just gave out a whole business plan off of leveraging one piece of information before that i gave a blueprint i hope they take notes like listen i'm giving you i gave the blueprint this is how you clean your credit mm -hmm. opt yeah. out use a 609 letter get familiar with companies like CFPB. It's the companies that regulate the credit bureaus. These are things that we need to know, information that we need. And I'm looking now and I go, we start looking and so many lives is changing off of information. Hmm. Yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> let me ask you, let me ask you yeah. another question. Um, you had an interesting thing where you said that um turn a liability into an asset. And that really struck my attention because it's like you said, we've been programmed so long to think that everything is uh liability on a certain level like that is not an asset traditional assets like cars for instance right mm -hmm. it's like no matter like we we did a video about how to like put your car in your business name and take the deduction and all that and a lot of people was like that's dope i didn't know any but then there was always some skeptics like well it's still a liability you're still wasting money on it yeah. but you broke down something and that was kind of crazy it got my attention to how you can actually turn make money with the car like running ads and toro <clears throat> can you talk about that a little bit yeah so 
when it comes to that, one of the things is that, look, I and it's Frank, and it, it probably rub people the wrong way. Cars are are, are liabilities, right? That's a, a a 19th century mindset, right? Take that back. That's in the 90s and the 80s that that mindset exists. It's not relevant now. Only people that that's relevant to is people who won't acquire new information and don't stay up to date with systems, right? Because there's no way that you can look at a vehicle unless you just don't have the information. I got friends that make six figures off of vehicles. No way you're going to tell me that that's a, a liability. It's a liability if we don't utilize it right. So then I started telling people, I said, listen, you want you want to learn? OK, here, let's take a car like a smart car. Right. I went and found the littlest car. Right. Littlest car that nobody wants. I'm, when I tell you, right, it's the smart car for two. Right. Listen to me. I'll right? be honest. I didn't, I didn't think it was yours when I saw it. I right? said, and then I saw you drive it. I said, it is. <laughs> yeah. Right. And I'm like, yo, I, like, I put music in and everything. Yeah. I beat. I'm like, yo, listen, funny thing is that I buy the smart car and then. Not only, so I buy the smart car. I tell people, listen, let me explain something to you. I got the smart car, and this is what I teach people as well. I say, look, you can go to a uh, swap a lease and literally do a lease takeover, put no money down out of pocket, get a car that costs $200 a month. This vehicle costs $200 a month. Now what happens next? Since this vehicle costs $200 a month, I say, yo, listen, earn your leisure. I got a car that's going to be in, in downtown metro Atlanta 12 hours a day. It'll probably get exposed to about 20,000, 30,000 people a month. Yo. Give me 200 bucks. I want to put earn your leisure on the left side in your company promotion. Is that something that you'll be okay with? 200, we'll do it. Sold. Lights, right? That, that's that's light. Okay, well, guess what? I'm going to get somebody else to put their business on the, on the right side. I'm going to get another business to put their business on the back of the door, on the back of the vehicle, right? I now make 600 bucks off a $200 liability. Then I say, say, well, how are you going to keep it in Metro Atlanta for 12 hours a day? You going to drive it? No, I'm going to go and hire somebody to drive it. So now I'm going well, to rent the car out to somebody who want to drive for Uber Eats, Grubhub, DoorDash, one of the grocery delivery services. Look, give me $150 a week. You don't pay gas or insurance. You give me $150 a week and you use the vehicle. Now I got and you use the car six hours a day. You got options. You got um, access to a six hours a day. Seven days a week. That's one person. I do two people. So now that's 12 hours. That's a 12 hour shift in a day. That's two people paying me 150. 150 a week. That's $300. That's $1,200 a month. So now I'm making $1,200 a month off the drivers, 600 off the advertisement. That's $1,800 a month. 1600 of that is profit. I'm making $1,600 profit off of one vehicle that they said was a, 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 a liability. If I got two cars, I'm $3,200 to the good every month. To the good. $3,200 a month. Straight cash, homie. It's, what, it's one of the best things I've heard you say, man. Mindset is the only liability. It's, and now you make $3,200 a month. Imagine this. What's your background need to be? What do you need a degree in? That's $3,200 a month paying for a vehicle. Now, if you if you really get tricky and you understand is that, then you go, well, it's other cars out there and you can look up, it's websites that are hacked and say, hey, look, these cars perform the best on Toro, right? You can literally get one of those cars and then make it pay for your other ones. Or you just use it as income. You come home and you're like, yo, I got my credit together, but I don't know what to do with it. How do I turn my credit to cash? That's one of the credit to cash strategies is actually learning how to execute and, and learn system. I, I, want, I want to talk about something. That was a whole lot of game, um, what you're known for, and that's turning credit into cash. Mm -hmm. Most people, when we think credit cards and how we get cash from it, it's like, yo, if we get a cash advance, then we can take money out from it. Yeah. But your strategy has no cash advance, and it still is liquidating. Can you break that down? So it's a little bit different. Like I, It's a whole bunch of different ways, right, when it comes to like turning credit to cash. And... I tell people, one, you don't ever want to do, if you had to pull money out doing a cash advance, they're going to charge you more and they hit you with extra fees and a higher percentage. So I tell people kind of stay away from the cash advances, but I do things like, it's just ways to generate cash, especially like my mindset is entrepreneur at mm -hmm. all times. So like I tell people do things like, you know, knowing which credit cards to use to do certain things. Um, for example, um, if I go and run ads, right? Like I could run ads and when I run ads, I can run ads and generate income back. But if I wanted to like pull money off, like what you just said, something like you just said, like trying to pull money off without doing a cash advance fee, mm -hmm. um, 
one of the things that we used to do for fun is like I would go on a cruise. And because when I go on a cruise ship, guess what happens on a cruise ship? Is that they give you the debit card, the room key. Mm -hmm. So when I go on a cruise ship and use the room key, I would just go to the casino and get 20, 30,000 in chips and get a cashier's check and go home. I just pulled my money off my credit card and I got reward points because I was on a cruise ship. So since you're on a cruise ship, you get five points per dollar. So since I'm on a cruise ship, I get five points per dollar. I literally got chips <laughs> with the room key. I could max every card off I wanted to and go home with the cashier's check if I needed to use it to invest, whatever I needed to do. And I still accumulated the reward points. So if I needed to go buy a house, I literally can go on a cruise three days for 200 bucks, go pull off 50,000, come home with cashier's checks and go do my investment. But you so you that's, this guy is dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> nah, so wait, so when you take the twenty, nah, no joke. So when you take the twenty, you are paying the twenty back, but you yeah. are redeeming the rewards points that come with spending that amount of money. You can keep the reward points. That's the perks and benefits of having credit, um, and that's one of the main perks and benefits of having credit. I tell people is that credit cards versus debit cards is that you spend your cash, you get nothing back. Mm -hmm. You don't get big interest from letting it sit in the bank, right? But what? how do we actually use the bank to for a benefit? What do we get from the bank? Like, And one of the things is that why they incentivized it was the reward points. But a lot of people in our community don't have that information and know how to use the incentives that they give us. We it's don't even fact. do the research. The research. It's like, I feel like like that's like the fine line. Like nobody's reading the fine line. Like, yo, you get this, these. I mean, the, the most we ever look at is like, yo, can we get air, airplane rewards or airport mm -hmm. rewards and hotel rewards? But there's so many other things like that you can actually be using this for. <laughs> <laughs> yo, listen, right? Is that one of the key things is this, right? Um, today, you know, I got on recession proof, right? Um, but I'm an advocate of my community, I'm an advocate of where I come from. Some people would be like, yo, it's ignorant, y'all. We shouldn't wear designer clothes. We shouldn't do this and, and do that. Um, wear support black, on, whatever it is, whatever you want to wear. Wear naturally, you know, things that's made from natural products, not cotton. Um, I like wearing nice clothes. Louis Vuitton, Fendi right now, some of my favorite Dior. Um, but I know everybody, a lot of people in the community this is what they're after. These are the things that they desire to wear because it gives status, mm -hmm. right? It's kind of a sense of status, and I'll keep it a buck. It is it's a sense of status that people want something that costs more, something that's extra flyer than, and make it separate. We got people growing up that and kids that don't know how to actually go and get it without doing something illegal, right? So they go and selling drugs and robbing people for these designer clothes because nobody told them that, hey, listen, you can actually be an entrepreneur and learn business or you can leverage credit and get it for free. So what I did was this, I started going, um, I don't, I don't want to spend my money on stuff. I'm cheap, right? I really don't like spending my money. So when I get designer clothes, I get it for free. I'm not going to spend cash. So in order for me to get designer clothes, I say, listen, I can run up my reward points and then redeem the, the transaction. So when I go, like I went and went to Louis Vuitton, spent 6000 right? Mm -hmm. Like $6,500 in Louis Vuitton. And I literally redeemed my reward points to cover it. How do you get the reward points? People don't know is the benefits of a credit card. Like you said, your gold American Express card alone gives you four to five points per dollar, four to five points per dollar, every dollar you spend on running ads. So you mean to tell me you're going to incentivize me making money with your money. Here's a $100,000 credit card. Go run and, and spend it, run ads to market your business and get in front of people. And I'm going to give you rewards for using my money. I ran 100000 on ads, made, um, had a million dollar month. On the back end, they gave me seventy five hundred. Can we not let that just go over everybody's head? <laughs> <laughs> we just gonna breeze past that. <laughs> Yo, I mean, congrats to you for that. <laughs> nah, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, but that is is that even with that, I'm gonna stay on that and the power. And, and nobody can say it's not power in a black dollar, right? Because that is the black dollar. These are things that are in services and um, the community I built for our community. And so this is our money circulating within our community. Mm -hmm. But I literally, this is the, the point is that the information, I literally ran off my, my Amex Gold, spent 100000 brung back a million, and then got um, 
close to like 9,000 reward points. So then I redeemed it and went shopping at Louis, spent 6,000. So when are you redeeming it? Are you getting a, a gift card to the store? Like, are you getting like a sax card or how does that work? No, nah, I literally went shopping, uh -huh. swipe my card. When I go sh shopping and swipe the card, I literally go in and you can go into the reward, the membership site, and you just go, hey, redeem purchase. Uh, so you, you just redeem the points to cover the purchase, the transaction that you made, and it cover it. Gotcha. Yeah, and the good thing is you can use that for a variety of different things, like travel, anything. So it's like you're not paying for, like you said, I mean, it's like anything that you do. And that's I'm glad you said that because it's like I feel like it's financial literacy teachers. It's our job to do things responsibly. So like even when we got our cars, me, uh, Matt, and Troy, we got Range Rovers, but we made a video and it went like semi-viral. But I put it in there like, don't think that we just did this irresponsibly. And then we made like a whole video like explaining like how you can actually put your car in your business name and take a deduction and all of that. So it's like when people see you with, you know, these designer clothes on, it's not like you're just getting money and just spending it on that. Technically, it didn't really cost you anything because you're paying for it with reward points. You yeah. reinvested your money into your business, which <laughs> right. grossed more money, but you didn't even take the profit of that. You just used the reward points to pay mm -hmm. for that. And I ain't even reinvest my money in my business. I'm going to use that money again next month to make more money. <laughs> well, yeah, because it's the credit. It's the credit, credit. Yeah. Yeah, the credit. I use my yeah. money to go buy stuff. That's what, I think the best part is what you said is like, yo, I'm cheap. <laughs> like Bro, I don't like spending my money. I'm buying. I love that. I'm buying. I'm in the middle right now of buying a bank. 1.5 million. I'm buying a bank, and essentially, I'm buying the land. Talk about a, that. Talk about that. <laughs> Breaking news alert. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Listen. Right. So right now, I'm in negotiations of buying a, a piece of land that a bank happens to sit on, a SunTrust Bank. They have a 12 year lease in Georgia. Yeah, in Georgia, and. They're, the 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 month the amount they pay is about one twenty a year. Um, they pay one twenty a year on the lease. They got a twelve year lease. The the property is like one point five. We I'm trying to give them one point five for the land. Now I own that. They have a twelve year lease, meaning in a bare minimum lock in of eight years. Mm -hmm. So for the next eight years, I'm gonna make one point two. Uh, I mean one hundred and twenty five thousand um, a year. A year. That's a hell of a salary off of owning the land, owning the bank, and I'm and I'm still right. This is reinvest. This is where I put my money at. Instead of putting it into like, yo, I'm gonna go buy designer clothes. Nah, I'm gonna keep acquiring land, keep acquiring property, and and really build and learning what to do with money and learning how to play real estate. So now I got a long term hold. At least now, it's a bank there. I got a long term play for the next eight to ten years. That money now just goes back into that can go and invest into with my daughter. And now, you know, especially when you can play with money, y'all get so many people on here that teach us how to save money and invest it and let the interest compound. You imagine having 125000 coming in every year compounding for the next eight years to 12 years. Let me ask you this. As far as the credit, because um, you, you're using your Amex to run the ads. How did you get the... Um like, how'd you get your first business credit card? Or are you using your personal credit card or is that through the business credit card? Business, but it started, everything starts like business credit is super sexy. Is everybody want to talk about business credit, but it all starts with your personal. So my personal credit report was structured properly and I was the PG. So I did a personal guarantor, put my social on the line, put in my business name. And then that's how I, you know, I just kept building. You just kept doing it like that. Mm. Same thing with the personal, yes. like the same way you build personal credit, you just build it that way. Yeah. Good history, pay your bills on time. And Getting your net 30s, net 60s, different things on it. Um, but my main goal, like my, where I really focused at was all on the personal side. So what was the first limit? You remember like the first limit that you got on your business credit? Like a small, was a small amount? Yeah. What? Oh, business or personal? Business. On the business side? First limit, nah. That first limit wasn't. Uh, that first limit was nasty. It was like thirty thousand. Okay. Then we started getting. You already to had like, established it from the personal. Yeah, yeah nah, my yeah. So as long as your personal is good, you should be able to get a substantial amount in business. You just yeah. The thing is that that's why I tell people work your personal because then once you work your personal credit, once you work that personal side, when you go to get business credit, you're gonna get double and triple your limits from what you have on the personal. So if you work this, get these large, let them season. Um, let your personal card season and grow those. When you go to apply for business, you should you you shouldn't be going getting a ten thousand dollar business credit card. So you have multiple because like they say personal card, you shouldn't have like more than like three or 
for like does that matter with business or <clears throat> business is a little bit business is different because business doesn't report on your credit um some do like capital one okay um don't get the that one if you don't want it to show on your credit report that's one of the business cards that show but my thing is that I show, I specialize in like personal side. I got a sequence. I, I learned how to do and go get 15 personal credit cards with only like five inquiries. Mm. <laughs> I need an explanation. Huh? But before, I, I, I want the explanation on that. But I, I'm, while you're saying this and like, how does one grow the limits on their credit cards, right? Because like sometimes like you can have a credit card, you pay it off and like you actually have to go in and try to increase it. But sometimes there'll be a, uh, a situation where the company will say oh, we've increased it because of your good standing is there a strategy to grow it to double it and triple it so when it comes to growing your credit cards like i tell people is that you want to put everything on them i'll take like if you're going to work credit cards take a few of them like because i teach how to get massive amounts but if you only have a few what you want to do is is put everything you should never use a debit card mm -hmm. right and this is the example i tell people i say listen if if you're walking down a dark alley with 10000 in your pocket where they robbing people at, who money you want in your pocket? Yours or mine? Yours. yours. Exactly. <laughs> so every day you go out and you swipe in your debit card with, with, with your hard-earned money, your hard-earned money versus, and you put it at risk. We all know how fraud and how high it is now, right? So every day when you go out and you're using your debit card and you're putting it online and you're making purchases, you're putting your money at risk. So when you put your money at risk, why would instead of put everything on your debit card, I mean, on your credit card, put everything that you spend on a credit card and pay it off, not go buy and buy whatever you want, the money that you would have spent out of your debit. Then you pay your credit card back off, pay your credit card bill a few days early, two, three days early, but pay your credit card back off. And not only are you leveraging and putting somebody else's money at risk, you also get incentivized for using it. So everything that you spend should automatically run off of an actual credit card. I run everything that I spend off a credit card. And so like that usage increases it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When you when you keep maxing it out, like yeah. if you can figure out, depending on what you're doing, like with me, we'll run it as like I, I, I specialize with really helping entrepreneurs. Like we all have to learn how to make money ourselves. How do we turn our credit to cash? How do we grow our businesses? So if we're going to use and grow a business, I'm going to use my car. So like I max my card out on ads, hmm. right? I'm like Facebook man. ads, Facebook ads, things like that. I also built a relationship Man, y'all got me talking. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. No so, one's listening. <laughs> um, I built a relationship. I built a relationship um, with a guy at a watch store and he will resell watches. Right. So he had the, the opportunity. He was like, yo, you know, it only take me about seven or 14 days to resell a watch. People come in all the time, trade it in. You know you get hit when you go to trade the watch in. So they're not going to give you full value. Well, he says, listen, if we buy it the same night, I can get it for what they paid before my store puts it online and puts it in the system. We can buy it for the same price. So what we would do is literally, I, I, give, I gave him, I let him hold one of my Platinums. He would buy the watch when it came in that night, resell it because for the, the value of it, he already was the, known for selling watches. He resell it for the value. I'm getting credit on my credit card for how much the watch costs. We started with 12,000. We didn't did 60,000. We didn't did 14s, 24s, and literally built it out, maxing the card out. Now my credit card on, on, on like that platinum I got is $200,000 limit. But it's just information and being able to seize the opportunity. And, you know, that was one of the things we had a good relationship and trust coming to play. That ain't something you can, people can duplicate. So I don't really speak on that a lot because yeah. that's not something you can duplicate. But it's just things that happen. Just knowing. So, yeah, just knowing. So, how, yeah. so, so now can, let's go back a little bit. So how do we acquire the multiple cards without having so many inquiries? Because that's, I mean, I, I do anything and it's like, you've got an alert. I'm like, oh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> yeah. Is that, um, man. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. But, uh, look, we here. Um Man, it's really for the culture. <laughs> hey, listen. I'm going to tell y'all, listen. I ain't going to be telling people, right? Yo, so, but no. Um, <laughs> this, is the, this is one of the greatest of all. Yeah. So, what we do 
is that we got to understand, right? I'm going to break it down to y'all is that we got to understand that banks have rules, right? I remember going to people. I'm not, I'm not going to hold you. I remember going and I was, I was in credit and I was getting good and I'm going to try to figure out how they do funding. Cause I'm like, yo, I don't believe in no man fishing for me, right? You're not going to go and, and, and fish for me. I want to learn how to fish myself. So I wouldn't pay anybody to get me funded. So I'm not going to go and say, hey, let me go to Rashad so he can get me funded and I'm going to give him 10%. Right. A lot of people are OK with it because they're lazy. They don't want it. They don't have that drive. My thing is that I need to know it because I need to be able to make adjustments and and help other people put my other family on. We're not often to come and give you 10%. So. I remember running through a sequence and figuring out, I'm like, how do I do it? And I tried to apply for credit cards and they all got denied. I'm like, something wrong. So I'm like, okay, do more research because you can't just apply for credit cards. So I go, okay. So over time, I'm, I'm, and, I, I'm and I apologize, my family might feel some kind of way. I torched so many credit reports. <laughs> like, yo, I'm telling you, they had inquiries. Like my wife at one point had like 24 inquiries. I was trying to figure it out, right? <laughs> Like moms, brothers, right? Everybody had it. Like everybody. Um, one of my cousins is the one who, when we figured it out with, he he got the move. But I started learning that banks have rules. A lot of people are familiar that Chase has a 524 rule. You can't get more than five credit cards with Chase in 24 months, right? And so, okay, okay, get it. So then I started researching and then you got banks like Bank of America that has a 234 rule. You can get two credit cards every three months, um, three credit cards in a year, four credit cards total. OK, that's their rule, but they don't worry about if you get credit cards from other banks. So I started learning the rules. Barclays has a rule. You can get one credit card every day. Mm. <laughs> so it excites people. But the, the, the cold part is the exciting part was the fact that Bank of America will let you get two credit cards every three months. But the two credit cards that you can get every three months, you can get the same day. If you get them at the same time, you get them on the same inquiry. You get one inquiry, two credit cards. Mm. Mm. See, Barclays ain't that great. Yeah, one credit card every day. I can only get one because I can't come back tomorrow once these inquiries hit. I'm done. Yeah. Can't come back. Right. So this is when I started learning how to stack my credit card applications together. Then you have to understand is that, listen. Every bank, see a lot of people get their credit together and the dream credit card is American Express. Listen to me, American Express goes last before Discover. The reason being, they're not strict on inquiries. They're strict on new accounts. So if you don't have any new accounts within the last six months, I can get you approved for American Express with 18 inquiries. This is where you want to be at is you want to look and go Amex, Chase, you put them last. They're not super strict on inquiries. And you have to understand with them is that they're going to come. And the reason they're not strict on inquiries is because they're going to do more of their verification and underwriting on the back end. You got companies like Barclays, um, Alliant, B of A, they do their underwriting on the front. So if anybody like most of the time when you get an approval from Barclays, um, it may take you 48 hours and it take you 48 hours because they're doing the underwriting on the front side. They don't go through. They may hit you and ask you for um, verification documents, income, prove your income. They may hit you with that. Cool. Chase is going to hit you with a soft pull later. Let your credit card utilization start going out of whack. Like you using this credit card heavy. They'll hit you with a soft pull. When they do a soft pull, if your credit score it has dropped, you got derogatory marks. Your utilization is out of whack. They're going to slice your limits. American Express is going to come and say, well, you put. 150,000 on your application, they're going to come a year later, ask for an income verification. They're going to ask to, to get your, ta your tax returns and say, well, you only made 40,000. Slice your limits. Discover does the same thing. All of this is what helps. We have to under, this is the information that we have to understand when it comes to credit card stacking. So when you say, how do you get multiple credit cards at one time? You have to look and learn the rules of which credit cards can I apply for and get multiple cards at one time. Mm -hmm. From one bank on one inquiry, literally stack them all together and do it at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, Whew, key to that, man.
Fire Thank emoji. <laughs> Outstanding. Yeah. So, so let's let's talk about recession proof, right? Because at some point, it's like, all right, you learning all this stuff, you learning this information, and it's changing your life. I'm assuming it's changing your family's life. Mm-hmm. At what point do you turn that into changing and educating other people? Listen, with that part, um, that was never my goal, right? I'm honest. Like, that was never my goal. My goal was never to help other people. It was it was a secret, right? You understand. Everything, I, my family thought I sold drugs, <laughs> right? Like, I always see people. People think that, yo, everybody, these dudes be online selling information. This is how they make money. They ain't really doing it. I tell people, fact check me. I had a Bentley truck before I ever helped somebody. Ever, right? G-Wagons before ever. Own my house. Investment properties. Before I assisted, because I had the game. But I wouldn't, you know, it's, it, it's how we feel. We know something. Sometimes we don't tell people. You got secrets and stuff that you know, be like, yo, nah, I know how we get the podcast number one. We know. <laughs> you, you're like, yo, I'm not telling. Right? You're not going to come. I'm not going to tell. Got to run around. <laughs> right? <laughs> so you got to go figure it out yourself. Um, Eric Thomas. Eric Thomas. Um, I was in Masters of the Game, and Eric Thomas said that, if you know something that can help another man change the trajectory of his family and their future and you don't share that information, you're selfish. And it sat on me for a while because I still was like, yeah. All right. um, <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I was like, it, it sat on me for a while. Um, but it, it, it came to a point to where it was like, yo, is that what's the what's the impact that you're gonna really want to make now that you're making money i had my daughter and then i started really seeing like i was born when i was born my mom was homeless we lived in a shelter from the gate when i had my daughter she came home to a house i own and i think and i look and i go it's so many people that need this i'm gonna be wrong if i don't share it right and so everything i created though was like for myself so then I started sharing it with people. That's when the recession proof started. And that's when I created a community. But I didn't create like a program. I literally created a family. So everything that we need, I go out and we do things, right? Like events that we have. We all came to the yeah, event. Yeah. It was recession proof was official. Yeah, you know, official. Listen, official. I fly on private jets. Guess what happened? My mentees fly on private jets. You're a part of we a family. We operate on the same level. So they flying in on private jets. We got all the exotic vehicles. They drive nice vehicles. They drive nice cars. The whole event was free. So what happens is, is that not only are they learning being able to be financial literate, they learn how to run and scale businesses. So now I'm teaching you everything you need to know about credit, but then I'm creating leaders because it's in order if for what I did for my community. How can I get, I was like, yo, I need at least 10, 15 other people doing this. I never expected it to be hundreds yet thousands of people going, nah, I need to help my community. I need to help my community. And it's still people out there who don't know who I am or that I exist. But it's thousands of us helping our community. So when we get on these platforms, this is the, the growth point is that we need more leaders in our community. Mm-hmm. We need more people who are financial literate to take this back. Everybody's not going to have the tenacity and say, I want to fish for myself. But for those who do, those are the people that we need to stand up in the community that they need to take that back home and be that for their family. They need to be that for the people around them, that resource for them to come and get this information from. Because if they watching this podcast or listening to this podcast, how many people they know who don't listen to it, who didn't catch this information? So that's my point is like when you look at recession proof, my whole goal is to create leaders in the community when it comes to financial literacy, when it comes to actually business, um, when it comes to growing and scaling and just being all around leaders, um, not only with financial literacy, but if you see we did a the takeover. Remember, we did the Kroger takeover, mm. shut it down. Kind of went viral a little oh, that bit. Was yeah, that, was no, that was incredible. That was big time viral. That was big viral. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, salute yeah. to that. I forgot about that. Salute to that. That yeah. was yeah. That was really dope. If yeah, anybody that's not familiar, um, the guys um, mm-hmm. went into Kroger in Atlanta, and I think they uh, twenty thousand dollars, forty thousand dollars for, yeah. uh, for families before Thanksgiving, so they can uh, you know not have to worry about that bill and um, you know buy yeah. groceries. So. Yeah, yeah, y'all did the free gas too. So, did the free gas. The crazy thing is, we did the gas before. Before the Kroger's, right? Before yeah. the Kroger. We almost went to 
do another gas station. But instead, we was like, yo, we decided let's just go do the Kroger. Went to Kroger. We tried to do gift cards and realized that wasn't going to work. <laughs> and we just <laughs> said, open the lines up. Everybody just ran it through. That's why the receipts were so long. We just let the line run. Everybody run through, run the groceries through. It was two days before Thanksgiving. Um, everybody ran through. And we took care of it, me and all the all the guys, a whole bunch of entrepreneurs. We all got together and collectively we did it together. We did a collective amount of 40,000. But what I, my point was that as a leader in the community and a leader of like recession proof, my mentees turned around a few days ago, day before yesterday. Shout out to Bees for heading that out. Um, my guy went out. They went out collectively and they put their money together, my mentees, and went and shut down a whole Walmart for uh, like a, a, a foster care um, kind of company, not foster care, but a, um, like a shelter company that takes families in and help them get rebuilt it and pretty much went and shut and bought all of Walmart. Now, one of the mentees um, had a truck. He went and learned how to leverage his credit, got his own trucking company started. He literally brung his truck to Florida. The mentees fly out. They all wow. in recession proof shirts and the news cameras out there. They go shut Walmart down. And do a give back had nothing to do with me. Guess what the name was that represented it when they said who did it? Recession proof. They said recession proof network. And I'm like, yo, this just shows the selflessness of the community that we built. It. And that, that, that's why I was like, yo, this is different. Um, so it's really a family. So in the recession proof, you actually so you also teach people like different steps on like all of it. Because what I'm realizing, even myself, I had to be educated on. Cause it's like, like you said, a lot of people, everybody, a lot of people have courses and things of that nature and educational platforms and things. And it's like, what I'm realizing is that you can only really learn so much from like YouTube yeah, or like even like a podcast, like our podcast, I think is the best out period. Um, and you can, there's plenty of information where you can just act on that just alone. But then some people want to, it's like, you know, some people want to go further with their education. So, like, what do you actually teach in in that? Like, what are what are some of the subjects that you actually teach in the um in the community? In the community, um, I've my main topics that I teach is how to start a credit repair business, how to scale it, how to grow it, how to automate it, so you don't have to be the one doing it. Everybody needs a solid financial foundation. Um, teach people how to be that person, and everybody gets it. Everybody needs it. So now you can be that home base. I teach people how to run a trade line business. So that way, you know how to actually turn something that's in your wallet into cash, right? Something you already have, how to turn that into cash flow. So literally how to start and run and scale a trade line business. I teach people how to start and help people get funded. Meaning you going, if people don't want to learn how to do it themselves, then well, then you help them for, uh, for 10%. So now you have your own funding business. Then I teach you all the every mastery trick you can learn about credit cards, which credit cards to do for running ads, which ones for free hotels and you name it, how to master your credit cards, um, how to travel for free, teach them about private jets. I teach them how to get luxury cars so you don't pay for them, right? Because the goal is like, even when I told you about the reward points earlier, I may have went on a $6,500 shopping spree, but that's that's because I'm established. Before I'm established, you don't spend sixty five hundred on clothes. You spend sixty five hundred on bills. So you don't pay for your groceries. You don't pay for your utilities. You don't pay for your mortgage. You don't pay for your your insurance. You don't pay for your Netflix. You use the reward points to make you have a zero overhead while your business grows. So these are all things that I teach. But then I realize, like you said, you can only I can only teach so much. And when you say you got a family, you can't go and say, well. Imagine a father saying, yo, my kids going to only know what I know. I'm only going to teach you what I know. And all I did was learn financial literacy. When I know that I got brothers out here like Alex Good Energy who running and, and got people making six figures in trucking. So I say, yo, I need you to come and train my people on trucking. I got people like Wall Street Trapper who know stocks and killing it in stocks. I say, yo, I need you to come and give them an introduction to stocks. I got people like Justin Owens with Forex. I got trust how to actually, you know, minimize taxes to where you can defer your taxes. And, you know, I can close out a year doing millions and paid same thing Trump paid. Right. How do we protect ourselves? Asset protection. All of these things come in because these are things that we needed. Facebook ads. How do we run Facebook ads? How do you scale um, a business? How to post on social media? 
I brung people in to teach us everything that we need to know in today's society. And I gave them an ebook to sell. So that way they have a digital product. Just, so in it's case. Like, well, just in case you got nothing else, you're an author. I also help you become an author. So now that you're an author, what happens is that if you got nothing else, you can go and repeat my content, what I said on EYL. You go put it out to people who didn't see and you say, well, I got a DIY credit ebook that him 500 told me. He taught me how to set up click funnels. He told me how to run ads. I'm going to run ads on this video, sell this digital product. And I still I got another business. And when you go on the book tour, don't forget the events pace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I, I taught him from that's look, my best. brother Nehemiah Davis, shout Neo. Out, shout out to Neo. Shout out shout Neo. Out to the bro, but that, and as fate would have it, because like when we, you know, we take our time because it's like we gotta be responsible about who we bring on the platform, and you know, we kind of you know try to see if we know anybody that. So we was looking, and it just so happened that somebody that we grew up with actually um, purchased. Yeah, he became a part of the community, and he said he actually made money in his in his first month. He, um, from our, made, right here in our community, some, somewhat of thirty thousand. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah, he made thirty thousand. Yeah, yeah, he probably he probably yeah, yeah, our fan. Yeah, for sure, he made thirty thousand. So I'm not saying that's going to happen to every single person, but yeah, well, we personally know him. In doing our due diligence, <laughs> yeah. um, it, like I said, it just so happened that we actually knew somebody that was from our neighborhood. That yeah, it worked out. Man, that's heavy. So you know, you never know. You know what's crazy <laughs> is that. <laughs> He thirty thousand first month. That's that's amazing. And, and double salute. We're gonna talk about it off camera. <laughs> uh, but that's the goal for twenty twenty one. Is that my goal? Is that you know I've helped make three people millionaires throughout my program. Now I got three millionaires, and I got sixty people who've been able to walk away from their job. And this year, the reason why I put everything now, like like why would you bring event space and all these different? Why are you bringing all this together? I said, yo, listen. My goal is I don't want to make 100 millionaires in 2021. So my goal is to be able to go out back into the community. And in 2021, I want to help create 100 millionaires. With that kind of goal, we got a 100 millionaire challenge. I said, listen, people don't understand it. You ain't going to make 100 millionaires. I said, yo, that's a big number. A million dollars is a big number. I said, listen, I made a million dollars in 30 days. If they can perform at a tenth of me, they'll be a millionaire. All they need to do is perform at one tenth of what I do. And if they fail and lose and do 20%, they walk away three, 400,000 a year. Hell, we still successful. Our community is a lot better. That's a fact. So, okay. and one of the things with EYL, um, I feel like online education is a new college. Everybody thinks I'm anti-college. I'm not anti-college. If you want to go to college, I went to college. For he a has college, a degree. So, you know, <laughs> fortunately, I didn't have to spend money for college, but. Yo, bro, I, why you do that? I did. I'm just saying. So, <laughs> you uh, college? I did. I did. We'll talk about that after. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, one thing, you know, people come on, whether it's Alex, whether it's uh, our brother, Kashif from uh, Vendor Ooh, Kashif, yeah, yeah. Vendor Shout Biz, out to Philly. Everybody. Um, a lot of people, you know, entrepreneurs, they have um, different programs and different things that nature. The only thing that we ever ask is that, um, you know, they just show us a little love and give us a discount for anybody that watches EYL. Um, and of course, you know, like I said, if you invest in education, you invest in education. It's up to you. If not, you know, just learning from the podcast is, is going to change your life. Um, but, you know, we dip, that's like a stickler. Like, if you want to come on, like, you definitely, we encourage people to to do a discount. And everybody, to their credit, has always obliged that. And uh, Marcus has been no, no different. So $500 off um, is what Marcus agreed. Uh, we are greatly, greatly appreciative of that. So it's $500 off of the program, um, which is actually the lowest price on the market right now. And uh, he did something exclusively for us, set up a, a website, rpxeyl.com. So there's no code needed, nothing. Um, you cannot get this price for the recession proof program anywhere else. It's the cheapest that it's at uh, anywhere right now, $500 off. And um, you just you click the link We'll have it in this description of this YouTube video. We'll have the description if you're listening on iTunes, Spotify. We'll also have it on our website under the alumni tab. Or you can just go to the website directly, rpxeyl.com. Once again, that's $500 off of the Recession Proof Program. And that's a special, it's not even a discount or a code. It's just a special situation that he did for EYL. And um, we greatly appreciate that, brother. Thank you. So if you're interested in joining the Recession Proof family, once again, uh, the website is rpxeyl.com. No code um, needed. It is a special website set up with a special price, which is $500 off. And we are honored 
to have that as the lowest price um, that you have anywhere in the world right now. There's no other place that you can get it for that uh, price. Appreciate it, brother. What do you have on the horizon? Uh, what are you working on? What would you like to tell the people? How can they contact you? Any any last good words that you want to give the people? One of the things that I'm, well, now you know what? I like I like still educate. He brought something up that I want to say. We ended on right, this. My name it. is Him Five Hundred. Um, I'm a credit specialist. I teach people how to leverage credit, turn it to cash. He said he paid for college. A lot of times we pay for college and we don't have a benefit from it. We don't make money from it. So I tell people, listen, you want to know one of the benefits of having student loans? If you keep them, if you do go to college, and if you're in college right now. If you keep your student loans in good shape, what happens is, is your credit report needs to look a certain way. There's data points that need to be hit. You need to have at least 10 plus positive accounts. You want to build the age of your credit report as well. So we're going to stay there. You want two to three. Well, you need two to three inquiries or below. Right. You want a utilization rate of under nine percent. Your utilization rate under nine. Everybody tells you 30 percent. That's cool. That's it doesn't have a negative effect, but it's not at its optimal point. It's at its optimal point when it's below nine percent, between two and nine percent. You also want to have 100 percent payment history. But the key point is that you want to have 10 plus positive accounts and you want to build the age of at least four to five years average age in your credit report. Nobody gets a student loan that's, that was yesterday. They got it yesterday. Right. Everybody has student loans that are old. One thing about student loans also is that there's never just one. So you have multiple student loans. Well, when you come to hit those data points, guess what? You may not even use that degree, but if you get those student loans in the right shape and you keep them in deferment to where you have good payment history, it helps you with the total number of accounts on your credit report and it helps you with the age of your credit report. So then when you add a few more trade lines, different kind of trade lines, not just AUs, when you add a few more different trade lines and bank products to your report, it's easier for you to get funding. So don't automatically think that, hey, I need to get my credit together. I need to go and clean the student loans off. Student loans have more positive effect than you believe when it comes to going acquiring funding um, and getting credit cards and things like that. My name is Him 500. I'm the leader owner of Recession Proof Financial Literacy, and that's it. Yo, man. <laughs> you know what? He finished off like the champion is. You know what? I want to ask you something that I've never heard you talk about. What? And it's like the backbone of your business. I want to talk about her 500. And her, mm. her role in the business and, and that, that balance between, you Troy know. Troy always asking the I got questions. to, man. Because, mm. you know, a married man is a married man. And I know it's, it's not easy um, to balance family life and work life. And I know mm. it's not easy when, uh, you know, you, you got a lot of things pulling you in different ways. Yeah. But, you you know, you're balancing it pretty well. How, you talk about her role? Yeah. So um, that's the role, backbone, partner, rib, punching bag, uh, everything. When I got a bad day, that's the person, you know, that's the only person that I can talk about it with. Um, not only that, raising my kids, raising a family, raising me. Um, from the gate, when we started this company, we started this together. Mm -hmm. 100% not boom, we started the credit repair company together. So she knows everything inside now, but she's been more so behind the scenes. See, I was more so, I'm on social media, I talk, she don't care. She a sociable person, like real life. Like I'm going out with all my friends, I'm on social media, like nah, we fin I'm posting content. Mm -hmm. First viral video, we argued um, probably 10 minutes before to get it right, like hold the light <laughs> <laughs> right there. Tilt the camera. You got the wrong angle. Look how you're making me look. I'm looking bad. Nah, argue, right? Everything that we went through, we've built this together. Um, and so now one of the dope things is that as I, I built, we've been, we've been building the business um, infrastructure. Like she's bringing in my HR people. She's the one who goes out and makes sure like the accountants and everything is integrated, right? She does all my integrations. And now we got it to where we're going to be kind of on on autopilot and more active in the community. I actually brought her in and said, well, listen, it's a community of women um, that search financial literacy that's in this family. A lot of powerful women, but I haven't been able to edify my women in the community. And I, as a man, could never edify the women and be like, yo, let me get a group for y'all and I'm going to set things up for you. So now we have a sector for anybody who's in a recession proof family. Another just added bonus is the women of recession proof. So now she's going to run women of recession proof to where they'll do women trips. They'll have women come and speak to them. Um, women accountability groups just for the women, just because males have a more natural dominance. It's more males than it is women. But it's a lot of women in there like that's bosses. Snoop, 
Snoop, uh, shout out to Snoop. Shout, shout out to, to Snoop. Snoop. EYL alumni. EYL. Right? <laughs> it's a lot of powerful house women in there. And I'm going, okay, we're going to set this group up of um, the women of Recession Proof. And shout out to her 500. That's one. That's her sector that she's going to be able to run and just pour back the things that she's been able to put into me and help be that for the other women in the group. One thing I wanted to ask you too, if you're down, um, and congratulations too, I know you're getting married. Uh, Appreciate it. So congratulations on that. Um, I asked, I talked to Alex about this. He said that he was down. So I'll put you on the spot to see if you're interested. But I know but you, you guys did a great thing in Atlanta. And we had we had a special event that we did. Uh, shout out to Trap. He was in town. Shout out to MG the Mortgage Guy. Shout out to everybody that joined us. We was, on, we was up town in Dykeman. And um, over 400 families got turkeys, gift cards, uh, Disneyland trip, TV. Shout out to my man Ken from Dykeman. He said he, he'd never seen anything like that since the government cheese days. Like the line, <laughs> the line was literally like five blocks down. Yeah. So I say that to say, you know, obviously it's a lot of people in need these days all across the country. Yeah. So maybe when COVID clears up a little bit, we can plan something real big, a give back, a home and away. We can come to Atlanta and y'all can come to New York. Yeah. If you're interested. Nah, hundred percent. I'm in. You want to know what's so what's what's crazy? Is that word 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 to my mother. Right. <laughs> um, oh, you've been in New York for a few days. <laughs> listen, yeah, right. No, but listen, right? Um, I, I hands down. We did the gas station giveaway. The night we did the gas station giveaway, y'all announced that y'all was doing the Dykeman thing. Mm -hmm. I'm laying in the bed with my wife. I called Neo and I said, yo, Neo, let's go to New York. I said, yo, EYL, Trapper, they got a thing they doing with Dykeman tomorrow. Let's go to New York. Alex had the clothes on his house. Mm -hmm. And I go, um, Alex said he couldn't go. He had to do something. He couldn't take off. Neo had to go and get his daughter. Oh, okay. Literally was coming. I was like, "Yo, let's jump on a flight and <laughs> yeah, come and fly." Yeah, yeah. And and we and, and, and we was gonna pop out here. I swear, we was gonna pop out. Um, my thing is like, look, I gotta be involved in the community in every way. So now yeah. I'm with that 100. percent Yeah. And after we did it, um, shout out to uh, Brandon. I see you was with him the other night. Yeah. yeah he hit yep. me up like, "Yo, bro, we gotta do it. We gotta do something big for New York." So yeah, yeah, yeah shout out to PTG. Yeah, good good acts always inspire other yeah, good acts. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like competitive competition to do good. And I think as entrepreneurs, it's like, you know, we we we, we can, you know, um, show nice things and that's great. We got to encourage people that way. But I think we also got to encourage people, you know, whatever it, whatever it is, because it, it might be five dollars that somebody it might be a smile. You never know how you can <clears throat> what you do can affect somebody else to do some good. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you might give away forty thousand dollars. Somebody might not be in a position to do that, but they might be in a position to just help a lady across the street. Mm -hmm. or, Snowball you effect. know what I'm saying? Just give a kid two dollars and not even say yo keep the candy i don't even want the candy just take two dollars like you know what i'm saying so we need more of that because we that's all we really have is our is each other you know and we we got an amazing unit and it's just dope you just brought up brandon um and it's crazy being in new york seeing all the love but it was another thing that um i wanted from new york right being here seeing love i rock with new york Y'all got something here that's different from everywhere else, <laughs> right? And that's that's Hove, like, and, and Rock Nation. Hove. One of my goals was to get signed as a management deal to get Met Rock Nation to actually manage my company to help that take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. And so that's like being in New York too, feeling that I'm like when you just brought it up, I'm like so many people here, but we don't think about who manages the entrepreneurs and gives that outlet. Yeah. Nobody, no A-list company or celebrities really have edified the education in the black community yet. Um, and it's, it's crazy. Not only is it powerful and impactful, we see it. But then the money that's circulating through the community is crazy. So now that's one of the things Shout I want to It just Shout so happens that we got. Rock Nation. <laughs> huh? We got the American Gangsta album. We got the black album. <laughs> you know. Shout yeah. out that's to, fate shout would out have to it. Rock Nation, man. Shout, shout out to the good folks at We got Rock a lot Nation. of friends, actually. Yeah, we got Rock some people Nation. over there. Um, shout out to everybody in Rock Nation, for sure. Yeah. Um, good people over there. People that we know, for sure. Good people. All right. Um, so how can the people contact you how's your what's your social media handles what's your website um all that information at him 500 on instagram at him 500 on youtube at him 500 everywhere um on twitter as well recession proof extreme is the website um to just check out the things that i offer 
my program wise is recession proof extreme also you can visit me on instagram at him 500 click the link in my bio or if you want more content and just learn more about financial literacy take a take a scroll through my page i got a ton of uh, videos where i just teach and just get information away for free yeah shout out to sherry bryant um president of rock nation who is a loyal supporter of earn your leisure a good friend of ours i just um yeah we got the seat warm for her yeah, yeah, yeah. See, it's warm for her. Whenever, whenever you're ready, <laughs> Sherry. I, 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 I sent my congratulations to Snow Allegra. Hopefully, that got sent to her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> shout out to Sherry. Shout out to Sherry for sure. Troy, housekeeping items? Yeah, shout out to everybody on Patreon.com. Y'all know that's our Proud to Pay program, man. It is uh, it has grown, man. It's so it's so interesting to watch how that has grown over the time. And uh, shout out to everybody that is on EYL University. You know the Patreon tier five members. You have access to the number one online school for education. That is EYL University. University. Uh, and shout out to everybody that's supporting the merch, man. It is, it is going really well, man. So I'm happy to see everybody out there. I, I need some people to start tagging them when they when they wear the merch, though, man. I like seeing that, man. I love to see people working out in it. I love seeing people uh, having it on while they're watching Market Mondays or they're watching the podcast. So keep doing more of that, man. I love to see it. Yeah, for sure. Thank you guys for rocking with us. We appreciate you. Um, we'll see you next week. Peace. Peace. My graduates from my school being Forbes, backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs> a mic drop. Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs>